Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you are doing awesome. It is Friday, and that means that where I teach Seth, which is here at home, it is Free Day Friday, where he chooses, he doesn't choose the type of subject, but he chooses what he wants to do in that subject. So that has really helped a lot on Fridays. He is getting very independent in his studies on the computer, so I'm so glad that God gave me that idea. And he has even started, like, I'm teaching him how to keyboard messages. So today the message was, I want a milkshake, please, Mom. So, of course, I help him because he's doing one finger. He's not, you know, this is how I type because I've been typing for so long. But anyway, I'm very excited about what we are going to talk about tonight. Um, diving into Psalms. Psalms 23. It's one of my favorites. I hope it's one of yours, too. It just speaks such peace to me. When I'm in turmoil, I like to read Psalm 23. And I know I did a lesson on it not too long ago, but I just, you can't get enough of it. It's just good information. And I'm going to share with you what I wrote on Facebook. I do a daily music share. So every once in a while I miss, like tomorrow I'll probably miss unless I get up early enough to do it. Um, I have... Tomorrow's going to be a busy day for me. I'm going to homecoming lunch. And then I'm going to the Promise for Alumni Night tomorrow night. So I'm kind of excited about that because I know I went to the Promise last weekend. But when I go on Alumni Night, I get to see people that I don't get to see very often. And I feel kind of torn because it's Walnut Springs homecoming too. But... I don't know why people plan things on the same weekends. That always happens to me. So my t-shirt tonight is Take This World and Give Me Jesus by uh, Building 429. One of my favorite songs. One of my favorite bands to go and see in concert. What a great message. Take this world and give me Jesus. Jesus is all I want. All right. So let's pray. Let's go to God and pray. Just going to do a generic prayer like I normally do when we start out. Then we'll do Psalm 23. I may not be on here for very long. Uh, I started taking B12 today. I'm hoping that's going to give me more energy. I also started taking uh, multivitamins again last week, so I'm hoping to have more energy. I'm riding, I rode, I rode seven miles on my little, it's not really an exercise bike because all it is is pedals, so I don't know what to call it. My cycle pedals i don't know anyway i did seven miles i did over seven miles last night so now i know that i can do seven miles and so i'm going to kick it up a couple of miles and do seven miles a night or at least five days a week i won't be able to do it tomorrow i will not be here tomorrow night because i will be at the promise with my peeps my promise peeps my promise family all right well, let's pray God, we just come to you, and we are so thankful, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control, that you love us, God, no matter what, that you, God, are the great Jehovah, the great I Am. You are the holy God. You are the righteous judge, God. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. I need to sneeze. I'm going to try to not. Uh, thank you, God. You're miraculous and mighty and magnificent, God. You are loving and kind and compassionate. 
And you are faithful, God. You are trustworthy, God. You are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we pray for the lost. We just cry out for the lost, God. We pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, God. We pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals. We pray for the prodigals to remember the relationship that they had with you, to return, to repent, to be reconciled once again, God. We pray for all the many disasters that are going on, God. We just pray that you would be with these people, that they would feel your presence, that you would send people to meet their needs that are the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. God, we pray for the people in Afghanistan. We just pray, God, that you would make a way. I know there are miracles coming out of there, God, and I give you all the glory, honor, and praise for that because we have prayed. We have prayed for there to be obstacles removed, for there to be miracles, God. We pray for the southern border. We just pray for it to be shut, <clears throat> for it to be shut to these people. God, that are invading our country. This is an invasion. Many may be seeking a better life, but many are not. Many are being smuggled in that have nothing good in store for our country. God, I just pray that we would shut our borders, God. We have had enough of an invasion this year. In eight months, we've had such an invasion of different people coming over more drugs in our country, more child trafficking going on, God, under the guise of getting young children over here for a better life, God. Who would send their child with a trafficker? Who would do that? And where do they get the money? Those are my two questions. If they have so much money that they can spend four or $5,000 to send their child over here by themselves with a trafficker, then why aren't they using their money to make their country better? It's all a plan. Someone's paying for it. It's so clear. The Holy Spirit shares the truth with us every day. God, I pray for this audit in Arizona. I pray for truth. I listened to part of that today. Some of it, I just, I don't know, God. I just pray for all truth. All truth to rise above any lie that we have been told this year and last year. God, that the truth would reign. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, God. And we want to follow truth. God, we just pray for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. So much murder right now, God. We just pray for justice for these innocent victims. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, let's read Psalm 23. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. Talking all about what Jesus does for us. The Lord is the, the Lord, the shepherd of his people. A Psalm of David. This is another Psalm of David. Sorry, I need a drink. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down, <clears throat> excuse me, in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So let's just, let's back up there. 
The Lord is our shepherd. So what does a shepherd do? The shepherd takes care of the sheep. The shepherd protects the sheep. The shepherd makes sure that the sheep have enough food and water. The shepherd watches over the sheep while they sleep. The shepherd does everything for the sheep. The sheep really don't do anything but eat and sleep and drink water. So the shepherd does everything. So Jesus does everything for us. He takes care of our needs. He takes care of our wants. He restores our soul. I talked about restoration yesterday. He restores our soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. He does. If we walk behind Jesus as close as we can get, we will stay in righteousness. If we decide to wander off like sheep do, then we're going to get lost. And Jesus is going to have to come get us. I've gotten lost before. Jesus has had to come and get me before and pull me back to the sheepfold. For his name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we are in the valley a lot of times. The sheep are in the valley too. They're in the valley. I will fear no evil. I will not fear in the valley. I don't like the valley. The times where I am in a valley during my life. But I will say the, this. I have learned a lot of important life lessons while I was in the valley. And we do. When we're on top of the mountain, sometimes we even think we don't even need Jesus. But we're in the valley. We're pretty desperate. For you are with me because he's always with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Okay, the staff is for leading. The rod is for instruction. The rod is for discipline. So they comfort, they comfort us. We do get disciplined when we get out of line. We do. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Wow, what does that mean? I actually listened to a lesson by Louis Giglio about that. Don't invite the enemy to your table because the table that you you have set before you with you and Jesus it is meant for you and Jesus and he invites your enemies so they can see how good things are between you and Jesus in other words you want to stick close to Jesus you anoint my head with oil my cup runneth over Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, you know, last night we talked about restoration. And I shared a song called Restore My Soul that I had never heard before. And uh, some of the lyrics talked about, you know, this psalm right here. About how Jesus takes care of us. So let's read what my study thing says about it. The imagery of the shepherd and sheep in this poem reflects our total dependence on God. Now, there's another thing about David. David was a shepherd when he was younger. Before he became king, he was a shepherd. So this is a point of reference that David knew very well about the sheep and the shepherd. A shepherd's chief concern is to do everything to ensure the well-being of his flock. 
The emphasis of this psalm is trusting God to meet our needs. As the good shepherd, God provides for our physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. He provides refreshment in the difficult experiences of life. His rod and staff lovingly guide, protect, and discipline his, che- his sheep. God's mercy describes his steadfast love. So, so again, the shepherd protects and provides everything that the sheep need. And David knew that so well. So I'm sure when he sat down to write this psalm, it wasn't hard for him because he knew. He knew from the perspective of the shepherd. So we are from the perspective of the sheep because we need to follow Jesus, our shepherd. He will take care of us. You know, think about walking up a mountain. Wouldn't it be easier if you had somebody to show you where the rocks were that you needed to avoid that would show you not to get too close to the edge? That's who Jesus is, and that's what he does. He knows what's up ahead in the path, and we have no idea what is there. So that is why we need a shepherd. We need someone to guide us. We need Jesus. Everyone needs Jesus. We are not the only ones that need Jesus. Everyone needs Jesus. So that is one of my favorites, Psalm 23. I call it my peace scripture. If I'm in turmoil, I will go and read that because that is the best reminder that Jesus is my shepherd, and he is going to take care of me. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to read. I'm going to read what I wrote today, day 12. Today is day 12 of praying for the nation. So I woke up thinking about, I don't know why that printed out. That's weird the other day. Okay. Um, I woke up thinking about the love, brotherly and sisterly love, not in a family. I mean, like in a church family, brotherly and sisterly love. So I shared the song, Love God, Love People by Danny Gokey. So praying for our nation to love God and love people. That was my prayer emphasis today. I love this song and message by Danny Gokey. These lyrics are so true. It seems so simple, but life complicates both. I have learned, though, that if if I love God with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, it is easier to be obedient to Him. I find it is easier to follow His Son as my shepherd and listen to the Holy Spirit for guidance. I have found that, and sometimes I've found that out the hard way by thinking, oh, hey, God, I don't need you for this. I got got this thing, you know, when I really didn't have it. I also find by loving God first, it is easier to love others. It is. If you love God, then it is easier to love others. Our nation is so divided in so many ways, we are no longer united. We are not united anymore. This is not the United States of America. It is the divided states of America, as a matter of fact. And I think there's a lot of people that have worked really hard to accomplish that. I'm speaking off cuff. I'm not reading. Um... The main problem is many have kicked God out of their lives to follow after the little G-gods of the world. 
People have convinced themselves that sin is okay with God, but it never will be. God will never be okay with sin. You will never convince God that your sin is okay because it just will not ever be okay with God. Even Jesus said more than once in the Bible, your sins are forgiven, now go and sin no more. Sin is the real disease in this nation, but there's a cure and it is Jesus. God wants so much more for all, for all than for them to live in a lifestyle of sin. Jesus wants to eradicate sin in our lives and give us a life more abundant. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So that is what I shared today. And I really feel all of this in my heart. That a lot of the problems that we have, not only in our country and all over the world, is that people do not respect God. They do not believe God is their creator. They do not believe that God has a purpose and a plan for them. They don't trust God. So this is this is the decline of society. When you don't have a God, the one true God, the God that created you, the God that created you to have a relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ, then there's going to be a lot of people that aren't happy. They may think they're happy. Look in their eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. Look in their eyes. Their eyes are sad. They may have a smile on their face. Their eyes are sad because they're not following Jesus. They're not following God. They're not loving God. They're not spending time with God in his word and learning more and more about what he wants to teach them individually. You know, we talked about seasons. You know, we all go through seasons. We all go through tests and trials. It's part of our Christianity journey, and none of them are the same. All of them are different. We're all going to go through different tests and trials as we walk through this Christianity journey that we're on that's going to lead us back to God. But I wouldn't want to be on this Christianity journey by myself. I am thankful that I have a shepherd. I have someone I can follow. I have someone who's going to take care of me. I have someone that is never going to leave me. That is a promise that he made to us that I will not leave you nor forsake you. And he will not. He will always be with us. We need to stay close to him. He knows the way. He knows the way back to God. He's the only one that knows the way back to God. We don't know when Jesus is coming. God does. The bridegroom always knows when the bridegroom is going to go get the bride. And that's God. Okay, how do we want to do our salvation message tonight? thinking maybe a really short one. No, I like this one. It's not super short, but it's not super long either. E-band. E3 resources. Not, not mine. E3 resources. The E-band, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, Romans 1, 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel. All right, I got to figure out which side. Okay, all right. Gold. The gold color represents God. 
the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. All right, so we move to the dark with a question mark. One of my bracelets is showing all the other colors too. That is so weird. It's the same hand. Okay, whatever. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. The first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? How can your sins be removed so that you can know God? The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. You don't. You do not have to live in sin. And it's a choice. And it's not a good choice. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. I lost my place. Sorry. Okay, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Okay, so this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So have you? And if no, then let's pray. Let's pray. I'm going to read this to where you can um, repeat the words after me or the sentences. I was just, I was reading something that popped up there. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, well, if you prayed that prayer, the green color on here represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. Okay, we have a heart. The greatest commandment, hey, we talked about this. I wrote about it. 
That is not a coincidence. That's the Holy Spirit. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves, love God, love people. Yeah, that's that's like immediate confirmation that I was, that the Holy Spirit had me on the right track. Okay. So then read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. Amen. The Bible is full of so many things that we need to know for this life. We need God's word. Little praying guy. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. Excuse me. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person like being born all over again. Hang out with other Christians, a little handshake thing, and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. It is an awesome place to start. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So if you prayed this prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified through by God through Jesus, his son. I just had a little deja vu moment, moment that didn't make sense when I dreamed it, but it just made sense then. Okay, well, th that happens to me all the time. I dream things. I wake up. I go, what does that mean? And years later, I'm like, I know exactly what that means now. All right, well, I am going to get off of here. I'm going to try to start limiting this to like 30 minutes because that gives me plenty of time to get Seth fed at night, clean up my kitchen, get my exercise done. And I think people watch shorter videos because you know why? Because I watch shorter videos. I very rarely watch something over an hour long. So let's get off of here now. I'm glad you came and joined me tonight. I am going to give you God's blessing in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We all need peace. This, Psalm 23, that's my peace. When I'm having a hard time, I go there, turn the fan on because I'm a little bit hot. All right, well, let's pray again. And let's pray for our nation. Let's do our nation prayer that uh, people would love God and that people would love other people. And that there would be unity to come from these two things. To all generations. All generations need to love God. All generations need to love people. There's too much division. The division must go. The bride of Christ will not be divided when Jesus comes. There will be no division. So the time to get united is now before he comes. It is time. It's time to be united again in our country. All right, let's pray. God, we just thank you and we just praise you, God. And we do pray for our nation, God. We pray that people would love you, God, and that they would love other people, that the disunity would go away, that the, the messages of confusion would go away, that truth would reign, God, that people would see truth as it is, that even people that are being deceivers, God, that they would start speaking truth. 
God, we just, I pray for any of my friends or family. God, I just pray that you would give them protection and provision and blessings, God, that you would guide and direct them, God, every day, that you would order their steps so that they would stay behind Jesus, God. I just pray that you would give us the boldness to go out and share your truths and to share your gospel, God, to share the gospel of Jesus so that many would be saved because we are not ashamed of the gospel, God. And we know that many need to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I found out that my friend Josie is working late. And so that's why she doesn't come to see me anymore. But maybe she will on a Sunday or on a Saturday. But anyway, I miss miss my friend Josie. I pray for her and her family, God. Her blessings and protection and provision. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, my Pray and Share Warriors. It's been awesome to be here. Have an awesome rest of your night. And have an awesome tomorrow, which is Saturday. I will not be here tomorrow night. Possibly will be here Sunday night. Not real sure what my plans are on Sunday. So much love and cyber hugs. Till I see you again, good night.